Uh, Minister, I know that you're aware of the fact that there are 143,000 jobs involved in the airline industry in Ireland. The industry is now on its knees, as my colleague uh, Senator Buttermer has just said, and indeed as your own speech pointed out. Uh, not unlike Senator Buttermer and others in the House, I'm sure I've been contacted by everybody from suppliers, technicians, ground staff, airline pilots and travel agents with respect to the industry and where it's going. As we speak, uh, Minister, there are over uh, 1,200 pilots are grounded um, with nowhere to go. Um, there is also the situation that the remainder of the pilots that are in the air are been paid somewhere between 25 and 30 per cent of the normal salary that they would expect. To say that they are in serious trouble would be an understatement. We are now coming into the second summer with travel restrictions. Airline staff and their families are facing continued hardship well into 2022, if we are to look at the time frame that has been set out by government. Uh, Every airline pilot uh, who contacted me mentioned Aer Lingus, uh, and, and it's a known fact, going back to the good old advertisement from Aer Lingus, uh, when you saw the shamrock in an airport, you knew you were home. And we simply cannot allow that uh, airline to suffer any more than it's suffering. We've got to, as my colleague Senator Buttermer said, we've got to start working to save that airline. I know indeed the Leader of the House, I, I was speaking to some people last night and Senator Doherty has been more than facilitating with members of uh, the Pilots Association in working with them and I want to compliment her today on that, so I do. Um, Minister, as you know, uh, for a pilot to uh, remain flying, they must have their licence up to date. And because so many are grounded, keeping their licence up to date is going to be a challenge for the future. And can I say now, Minister, that in order to keep licences up to date, I would ask your department to look at a scheme whereby you would be able to ensure that pilots who are currently not flying uh, are given time uh, in simulators to uh, maintain their, their license, because once the industry opens up again, we want these people to be able to fly safely. Uh, it, there was a, a figure quoted to me yesterday that it could cost up to €30,000 for a pilot to become re-licensed if they lose their license uh, as a result of not having flyer, flying hours. So, the other problem that we have uh, with respect to the uh, pilot uh, support schemes that we need for them. Um, uh, sorry, Minister, I just ran off my own track there for a minute. Yeah, with respect to the flying hours, we've got to find a way to ensure that all of our pilots are ready to fly. But this does not take away from the fact that the airline industry, and in particular uh, the registration and licensing of pilots, it, it is without doubt the worst job in Ireland with respect to terms and conditions of employment. There is uh, no um, permanency, from what I can see, for the majority of pilots flying out of Ireland. Indeed, Irish pilots, many of them not flying into Ireland at all, but licensed here in Ireland, are in um, bogus self-employment. They are contracted on an individual basis, which is absolutely outrageous at a time like this when a pandemic comes because it impacts everything, including their PUP payments, um, including uh, pilots have no pensions. Uh, it particularly hits female pilots, this bogus self-employment. Female pilots have no maternity leave and no guarantee that once they've had a child that they'll get back into the air again uh, because there is no guaranteed flying hours at the other side of their uh, maternity leave. So at a time like this, these anomalies are shown up very, very quickly, and it is vitally important, Minister, that your department looks at employment and how people are employed within the airline industry. In addition to pilots, I have to say that cabin crew are the key people when it comes to safety on board an aircraft. And again, we have to find some way of bringing those people that are cabin crew back in to keep them trained and keep them up to speed, because we will, without doubt, start flying again in the very near future. So I'm asking you to consider a training scheme that will uh, keep cabin crew up to speed as well. And the state 
will have to invest in that because, as my colleague Senator Buttermer has said, it is the only way in and out of this country is through aircraft. And uh, we really have to um, ensure that cabin crew and pilots are ready at the moment they get the, the green flag or the green light, that they're ready to get back into the air. So I'm asking you to consider that, uh, Minister. Minister, there is also the situation, and I know everybody that speaks about the vaccine programme, you know, they have a special reason why people should be vaccinated. But pilots are bringing uh, everything into this country, uh, and they're bringing many of our exports out. The um, uh, Aidan Flynn of the uh, Freight Transport Association has made a very strong case to me, which I will forward to you, Minister, for the vaccination of those who are entering and leaving the state. I did promise the car here, look, I'd stick to time coming up on the last second, so I'll leave it at that, Minister, and thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Senator Crockwell. That's much appreciated.